Alright, what's up, y'all? Unfortunately, as usual, there's problems with the car. Basically, the current issue is I have a cam phaser limiter instead of a cam phaser lockout in my car. So my cam is able to phase a certain amount that it shouldn't be, and it's messing up a whole bunch of stuff. So I went ahead and ordered some new parts. They'll be here this weekend, and I don't know. I'll just try to fix it. You know, having so many problems now has made me really reflect on everything I've done with this car. And I've gone ahead and compiled a list of everything that I would do now if I could go back in time, and I still went for with building my engine. In this list, you can't see it on the camera, but I compiled a bunch of parts for any LT1 or LT4 engine to make a thousand horsepower and it should be reliably. Now, I went through the engine, the trans, and the rear end, and this list is not what's in my car now. It's just what I would have done with the foresight and the experience that I have now. Hopefully this helps you out if you're looking to build your car. This should be for all Camaros, so LT1, SS, ZL1, uh, Z06 Corvette, base C7, Z51 Stingray, Grand Sport, anything with a Gen 5 LT engine should be compatible with this list. All right, so the first thing you wanna do if you have an LT1 is get some GPI drop-in diamond pistons and Comstar rods. On their site, it goes for $1,880, and that's what I got in this motor. If you wanna run high boost or really beat on the motor, I would say that you need to build it because LT1s aren't known to hold boost the best. The second thing that you should do is get your LT1 heads ported and built by Frankenstein. Now, I did not do this, but it seems like Frankenstein is the best bang for your buck, and they do the best job porting the heads, and you can also have them build it while they're there. In combination, with that, you want to get some manly extreme duty intake and exhaust valves. Those valves go for 530 a piece. You need two of them because it's intake and exhaust, so 530, 530. The Frankenstein head building and uh, valve swapping runs about $2,000. The next thing is a Brian Tooley Racing Stage 3 cam with 32% fuel lobe and their DOD AFM Delete kit. So the cam itself is $450, and I believe their DOD AFM Delete stuff should be around $1,000. They have a whole kit for it. It, but if you email them and tell them what you're trying to do, they should be able to make a kit for you like they did specifically for mine. All right, so to go along with that cam, you need to get a KTEC high volume oil pump and KTEC C5R timing chain. The oil pump is $535 and their timing chain is $160. I guess LT1s and even some LT4s have issues with their oil pumps and high RPMs and boost. And to make sure the cam is running as good as possible, you want to get a late model engines VVT delete front cover and billet timing chain tensioner. That's Gonna run you about $880, but it gets rid of the whole cam phaser, VVT gear, and everything and just replaces it with an LS style single gear. It makes everything much simpler and much safer to run. After that, you're gonna to want to get an LT4 high pressure and low pressure fuel pump along with their injectors. You could get a stage two kit from Wild Tamer Motorsports like I did for around 1900 bucks To make sure that pushes enough fuel, you want to get a DSX tuning low side booster pump, which is around a thousand dollars. The biggest change between this hypothetical build that I'm giving right now and my build is you would get a Magnuson 2650 supercharger. I have a Gen 5 3 liter Whipple. This is the first or one of the first ones that's come out. For some reason, Whipples always sound like they have marbles in them. Like it sounds like there's metal grinding or something and I've taken it to shops. I've asked a ton of people. Even my old 2.9 sounded like that. I guess that's just how they are. It makes them a little more difficult to tune and it, it kind of gives me anxiety to hear that sound even though it was brand new out of the box making it. And Whipple as a company has been very, very difficult to deal with. They kept sending me the wrong parts. They wouldn't send me pulleys. They, they wouldn't answer my calls. It was just like a nightmare. So I personally haven't dealt with them, but a lot of my other friends with LT1 and LT4s have magnets on their cars and that's definitely what I would recommend to do. To go along with that supercharger, you should definitely get a forced induction stage two inner chiller. I only have the stage one, so you know, it doesn't freeze up the lines and everything, but I highly, highly, highly recommend that. I've driven this car for six, seven hours home from Pennsylvania after I got my tune and the blower was still ice cold. If you do buy it, use code SB2SS for a discount too. All right, so to go along with all that, you should get a KTEC 103 millimeter throttle body that's gonna run you $750 and a Rotofab Big Gulp intake, which is around $590. You don't need one, but you could gain a little bit of horsepower by throwing on an ATI dampener. I'm not really sure how much they are, but I'll throw one up. I'm not gonna include 
include it in the final price, but that is something that I would recommend looking into if you're gonna wanna do this. And also to go along with your engine build, you should get ARP head studs and ARP main studs, which are $460 and $240 respectively. The price will sometimes go up or down depending if they're out of stock or not. Uh, when I was building my motor, they were out of stock and back ordered to infinity. So I had to pay like, I think it was like five, $600 a piece for them. Also, you're gonna need some two inch complete street performance racing long tube headers. Uh, those run you, I believe around a thousand dollars. I would say to get some heat wrap on them just to be on the safe side, which is about another $200. And the last thing you should get is a Mighty Mouse V3 wild catch can. I have the 1200 spec one. If you have a boosted vehicle, I highly suggest you get a catch can. There's a lot of oil that goes into your intake. Even when I was naturally aspirated, there was a lot of oil that went into my intake. It just messes up a lot of stuff, dunks up your valves and you'll lose horsepower with that. In addition to all that, you're gonna have to worry about sensors and stuff. In this car, I run an LT4 map and an LT4 map sensor. And both of those range a lot in price. You could get the O'Reilly special or once OEM from Chevy. I'm not gonna include them in the final price because I'm not 100% sure that you need them for the tuning, but I haven't asked the tuner, so it's really up to you if you wanna include them in your build or not, but I would recommend them. All right, so with all the parts put together, you're looking at $26,202. Usually you're gonna have a machine shop put the motor together, deck the heads, make sure everything's good, balance the crank, all that stuff. In my case, that ran me $7,000. So the total price for just the parts and the machine shop labor, not labor pulling the motor, putting it in, any of that for just those few things, you're looking at $33,202. So that's just if you want a built LT1 motor to make a thousand horsepower relatively safely, it should be able to do that on 93 octane with a DSX low side booster. And just to clarify, I know you could run meth in this build, but I've heard a lot of horror stories of pumps failing and controllers failing and the meth not spraying out correctly and basically just blowing the whole motor. So I just eliminated it from this build. You should be able to run boost around 12 or below pounds and be able to make around a thousand horsepower. Also, you could run E85. You could get a flex fuel sensor from Lethal Performance. I believe they retail for about $250 or somewhere in that range. But when I was talking to Andrew from Complete Street Performance, he said that the LT4 fueling system does not really work well with full E85. They choose to tune on 93 octane instead of E85 for some reason related to that. So again, I just didn't include it in this build at all. If you have an LT4, you could basically just do all the same modifications I've said so far. The only difference being you would not need to build the motor. Now with that, you're going to need to also build the rear end and the transmission to be able to handle all that horsepower. So this hypothetical build is going to include a 10 speed transmission, but if you have a manual transmission, obviously just don't build it. You won't have to worry about a torque converter or any of that. But to jump into it, the first thing I would get is a G-Force nine inch conversion for the rear end, which is about $8,649. That comes with a diff, two axles, and I believe a few bushings. That'll enable you to put the power down relatively safely and not break anything. To go along with that, you're going to need a BMR lockout bushing kit, which is around $310. The next thing you should get is a one piece drive shaft from the drive shaft shop. I believe G-Force makes them, but it's not included in their rear end kit. Uh, the drive shaft I found was $1,075. The next thing after that you should get are some BMR upgraded rear control arms. I have all their upgraded rear control arms and I believe they were $230 a piece. You're gonna need three of those, so $230 a piece times three. So then like I said, the transmission in this hypothetical build is gonna be a 10 speed, so a 10L80. I did a little more research and found Circle D actually does transmission upgrades and theirs is only $3,245. And I would pair that with a circle D torque converter, which was around $2,500 when I had one a while ago. To make all that work and get your transmission tuned, you're gonna need the Houston House of Power TCM, which is around $1,000. And that makes the grand total for the rear end and transmission around $17,469. So like I said, if you have a manual transmission or an eight speed, it'll be cheaper because you won't have to include certain things or things will just be different amounts. So to make everything work on top of that, I would highly, highly suggest getting a tune from either complete street performance or late model performance. Usually a tune from a major shop like that will run you around $1,500. So everything put together is gonna to run you about $50,370 without any labor for pulling the transmission or the motor or any of that. That's just including all the motor parts, all the transmission parts, rear end and machine shop labor and the tune. Give or take, you could add, I don't know what would be appropriate, like $5,000. I wish I could go back in time and buy all this stuff at one time and not have to deal with the headaches that I've dealt with. I've had my Whipple blow up. I've had my transmissions blow up. I've had my camp phaser fuck up. I've had just so many problems, bro. It's just, I'm over it. The truth is if I could go back, I'm not sure I would build my whole motor again. Like the car is fantastic and fun, but bro, you could do so much more with 50 
$50,000 than just this. I would just say to get a Magnetson, put it on an LT1 and just have a great time with that for a little bit. But I'm still learning stuff every day. So if anyone finds any better parts or has any of their own recommendations, please leave it in the comments down below. Like I said, I was just making this list to help out anyone that wants to build their car. And I hope you have better luck than me when you do it. All right. Thanks for watching.